All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to derive the beautiful formula of the distance between a point and a plane, but this time with Lagrange multipliers. And you'll see how beautiful it will be. So it's a very, very elegant derivation. That's why I like to do this. So here's the setup. Suppose you have a point x naught, y naught, z naught, and a plane ax plus by plus cz plus d equals to zero. The question is, what is the smallest distance between the, this given point and the plane? So we always want to find that. Want to find this distance. And as I said, it turns out there's an elegant solution for this. Well, what is the distance between a point x, y, z and that point? Well, it's just the square root of this minus this squared plus this minus this squared plus this minus this squared. But because uh, if the square root of the of that I, quantity is minimized, the square itself is minimized, and vice versa, it's enough to just minimize the following quantity. x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared. And we call that one f of x, y, z. Because again, x naught, y naught, z naught is fixed, and that's our function. What's our constraint? Well, the constraint is simply that x, y, and z is in that plane. So the constraint is very easy in this case. Subject to ax plus by plus cz plus d equals to 0. So this function then becomes g of x, y, z. So we want to minimize a function subject to a constraint. Now, the answer is, of course, Lagrange multipliers. So what does Lagrange say? It just says that, you know, at the minimum or something, the gradients are parallel. So gradient of f is a multiple of the gradient of g. So let's calculate that. So it means fx is lambda gx, fy is lambda gy, and fz is lambda gz. And let's just calculate all that junk. So fx, that's just 2 times x minus x naught, and that's lambda times a fy is 2y minus y naught, and that's lambda times b. And fz is 2 times z minus z naught, and that's lambda c. All right, and then what's the next step? So, remember, usually what we want to do, we want to solve, you know, uh, not solve for lambda, but somehow use the constraint. So we have all those three identities, and we have the fact that ax plus by plus cz plus d equals to zero. And again, everything is fixed. a, b, and c are fixed. x naught, y naught, z naught are fixed. So how about we take these equations and solve for x, y, and z? So if you do that, you get x minus x naught is lambda over 2 a, so x equals to x naught plus lambda over 2 a, y equals to y naught plus lambda over 2 b, and z equals to z naught plus lambda over 2 c. And in general, for Lagrange multiplier problems, if you don't use the constraint, uh, you're probably wrong. And in this case, yes, we want to use a constraint. So we get a x, so in this case, a times x naught plus lambda over 2a, 
plus b times y, so y naught plus lambda over 2b plus c times z naught plus lambda over 2c plus d equals to 0. And I get everything is fixed instead for, except for lambda, which means that somehow in this equation we can solve for lambda, which is good because once we solve for lambda, we can solve for x, y, and z, and then we have our minimizer. So, now what do we have? We then get that ax0 plus by0 plus cz0 plus lambda over 2 a squared plus lambda over 2 b squared plus lambda over 2 c squared plus d equals to 0. Um, foiled everything out and just group terms that are alike. Now, the nice thing is lambda over 2 factors out quite nicely, and we get lambda over 2 a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals to minus ax naught minus by naught minus cz naught minus d. And now, let's just solve for lambda, but it turns out, notice all those expressions involve lambda over 2, so let's just solve for lambda over 2. So, lambda over 2 equals to minus ax0 plus by0 plus cz0 plus d over a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Which, by the way, starts uh, looking like the you know, formula for the distance between a point and a plane. And then, once we have lambda over 2, we then just get um, the following, right? We can actually now, in theory, solve for x, y, and z. And in particular, we have our distance formula. So our distance is just becomes x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared, plus z minus z naught squared. So that's the square of the distance, but in general, the distance is square root of that. Again, I'd like to remind you of this picture. We have x, y, z. Sorry, x naught, y naught, z naught. We have x, y, z. And the distance is just the distance between the two. And now, let's just use those formulas here. And there's a beautiful simplification waiting for you. So, this becomes x minus x naught is lambda over 2a squared. y minus y naught is lambda over 2b squared plus lambda over 2c squared to the 1 half. And then basically lambda over 2 squares factors out. So lambda over 2 squared of square root and square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Square root of lambda over 2 squared, that's just absolute value of lambda over 2. But remember, we have this formula for lambda over 2. So it becomes absolute value of minus ax0 plus by0 plus cz0 plus d over absolute value of this thing, what a squared plus b squared plus c squared, that's just positive. And then square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Absolute value of minus x is the same thing as absolute value of x. So we get ax0 plus by0 plus cz0 plus d, absolute value. Here we have x and x squared, and that just simplifies to x. And in the end, we just get x squared of a squared plus b squared plus c squared, which is our distance formula for the a distance between a point and a plane.
This time I just derived it using Lagrange multipliers because we first said we want to minimize this function and then we derived, you know, our formulas for x, y, and z in terms of lambda. We use our constraint to solve for lambda more or less and then we just plugged it back into our distance function and we get that. And uh, obviously it doesn't illustrate geometrically what is going on, but I think it's a very nice algebraic exercise and also a good example of Lagrange multipliers. All right, so if you like this example and you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.